Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 29, Part 2. If she was going to complete her plan, she was going to need Starlight's help. Given how it went last time, Twilight wasn't sure how that would go. Starlight was still staying in Trixie's wagon. Was she avoiding the castle or just keeping Trixie company? Twilight wanted to stop, but Knight kept her stride elegant and with a slight sexy sway to her flanks. With an effort of will, Twilight exerted control and stopped the sway. That was more than enough for her. She made her way towards where Trixie had her wagon parked. A familiar pop of displaced air and suddenly a little star was standing on her back, hugging her neck. Mommy, mommy, can I go play with my friends? Just like that, any bad feelings Twilight had for Knight were gone, and she could feel Knight's affection for little star. So long as you promise to only cast spells that you have mastered the counters for. Twilight said. And no inventing spells for the CMC. Knight added with her shared voice. Star looked a little disappointed for a moment, but then nodded. A scroll emerged from one of Star's pockets, and she noted down the new safety rules when dealing with the CMC. Star banished the scroll, then smiled, nuzzling Twilight. Now go and have fun, Knight said. Twilight didn't get a chance to add anything before Star vanished in a flash of magic. <laughs> you know she likes to teleport more than you do. Knight playfully jabbed. Twilight thought for a moment. You might be right. She decided to start counting stars in her own teleports just to check. As the pair of them, sharing the body, got to where Trixie had parked the wagon, Twilight felt something. A hum of magic echoed in Twilight's horn. It only took a moment to deduce that Starlight or possibly Trixie had set up a detection spell geared to detect alicorns. Well, that seems welcoming. Knight commented dryly. A ripple of Starlight's magic, and then the mare herself was standing in front of Twilight. Good morning, Starlight. Twilight said in a friendly tone. She could only imagine what she must think of her by now. By what she had been told, Starlight had the misfortune to see some of what had happened to her on the altar. Morning. How are you today? Starlight asked, an inch of concern in her voice as if she was expecting Twilight to not be okay. Twilight smiled. I'm fine, thank you. She did her best not to worry that she was feeling fine. She was fairly sure that she was feeling fine. After everything that she had been through, that was listed in one of her psychology books as being a very bad thing. With a mental shrug, she threw the idea away. She had things to do. Starlight looked doubtful. Twilight could see a slight haunted edge to her friend's eyes. James had told her that Starlight had the misfortune to have seen a little of what happened to Twilight on the altar. Are you sure that you're alright? No offense, but after what you went through, you really shouldn't be. Starlight pressed. Twilight pulled Starlight into a hug with a foreleg. Despite everything, I have never been better. Twilight had to do her best not to giggle at the disbelieving look that crossed Starlight's face. Really? I have a daughter, I'm probably getting married to Luna, all my friends are safe, I saved all the ponies in Manhattan, and yes, what I went through was horrible, but in the end, it was just pain. Starlight just stared at Twilight, not even blinking for long seconds. I think you broke her, Knight observed. Just pain. Just, just, just pain. I only saw it, and what I saw still haunts me. I'm not sure I'm okay after that, and how can you possibly be? Trixie only heard it, and she's been having nightmares every night. Princess Luna has been working overtime on just the two of us, and you're bucking telling me that you're fine? The concern and worry finally bubbled forth from Starlight, as she let it out. It was comforting, even if it was also vexing trying to work out how to calm her friend down. Do you think she will explode, faint, or attack us if we just say yes? Knight thought to Twilight, her mental tone highly amused. Twilight just ignored Knight, and hugged Starlight tighter. I'm an alicorn. We're kind of made to deal with these things like that and just bounce back. I'll be fine. I'm more worried about you and Trixie. She pulled back and offered Starlight a warm smile. It will be fine, Knight said. Twilight could feel her channeling some of her alicorn magic as she spoke. Starlight seemed to calm down, her tense muscles loosening, as she allowed herself to warmly return Twilight's hug. Mind control, really? Twilight mentally almost shouted at Knight. Oh, you know it's not. It's simply the influence alicorns have over normal ponies. You've been doing it to all of Ponyville every day since your ascension. In fact, thanks to me, you're doing it less than normal. I never did that intentionally, and that felt different than just seeming impressive or terrifying. So your friend is now calm. Get on with it. Twilight took a breath, grateful that at least Nova was behaving. Perhaps it was just a rule that she had to have one fragment misbehaving at any given time. She would need to get more data to check. Starlight, if you're feeling up for it, I have a favor to ask. Twilight softly said. Hmm? <laughs> Starlight cooed, leaning into the hug. What did you do? Twilight asked patiently. Nothing you don't know of. I'm guessing that she has not been sleeping properly with her mare friend waking up with nightmares all the time. She does not have a mare friend. Really? <laughs> Those two are too close to be anything else. Starlight, Trixie is... Trixie's voice called out from inside the wagon. A moment later, the blue mare's head poked out of the wagon. 
Why are you hugging Starlight? She asked, leaving the wagon and approaching. The great and powerful Trixie is most disappointed with you simply teleporting away. Trixie directed at Starlight. Upon getting no response, she poked her with a hoof. Morning, Trixie. Twilight said, offering a smile. Trixie demands to know what the hey you did with her. Trixie demanded. She was just freaking out. I helped her calm down, but I was not expecting it to be so... effective. Knight offered in her defense. Twilight could feel Knight stirring their alicorn power, likely considering how to use it to solve the problem Trixie was going to be. You will never learn if you just keep relying on that. Twilight berated Knight. Now try and use what you've learned from watching me to solve this problem with words alone. Twilight instructed Knight. She knew she should feel a little guilty about using Trixie as a lesson like this, but it was Trixie. And as much as she disliked the fact, it made it easier not to be. Uh, fine, I will give you your sport. Knight mentally huffed. The crouchy and annoyed Trixie demands to know what you are going to do to fix it, or she will be forced to turn you into a teacup. Twilight sends Knight forming a mental projection in their doorstep just to fall over laughing. Knight did her best to smile warmly and hide her annoyance at the mare. Starlight will be fine. The only reason that she's having this reaction is due to how tired she is. Knight channeled some unicorn magic, but not through her horn. Twilight wanted to shudder and giggle at the same time. The familiar energy infused with her body in a way that she had never felt before. The power took shape. Twilight guessed it was a strange version of a transmutation ward to stop Trixie from turning them into a teacup. Trixie raised a disbelieving eyebrow. Twilight locked down their alicorn magic, yet she knew that Knight could override it, but it made her point. What do you want me to do? Or are you just jealous that she's hugging me? Knight snarked. Trixie stuttered for a moment. Twilight wanted to face off. That was not how you de-escalate a situation. With her aura, Knight pulled Trixie over, forcing her to join in the hug. There. Is that not better? Knight asked. Huh? Starlight blurly asked as she tiredly nuzzled against Trixie. Knight carefully stepped back from the hug, letting the currently clingy feeling Starlight embrace Trixie. There. Solved. Knight mentally stated to Twilight. That was not what I meant. Twilight's mental voice was exasperated. Knight let their body smile happily at the two mares. Is there a problem? Starlight seems comfortable, and we are not currently a teacup. After a moment of enjoying the surprise hug, Trixie blushed and pulled away. Starlight was slowly recovering. Trixie checked to see if she was alright, and she watched Twilight warily. After coming to her senses, Starlight spoke. Twilight, you told me that I shouldn't use mind magic on my friends. I did not! Knight started. Seeing the disbelieving look on Starlight and Trixie's faces, she raised the hoof implication. Very well, I will tell you a secret, but you have to pinky promise not to tell another soul. Starlight looked doubtful, but complied. Trixie needed a bit more encouragement from Starlight. It was not mind control, but it was simply part of what it means to be an alicorn. What do you mean? Trixie demanded. Men Knight sighed. Alicorns are literally made to rule ponies. Because of this, it's hard for me not to influence the ponies around me. My words are more convincing. My ideas sound like they are wiser than they might be. If an alicorn shows up on the battlefield, all their allies are inspired and their foes quake in fear. So, are you saying just being an alicorn means you have some sort of mind control aura? Trixie asked. Not mind control, more like an inspiring presence. Not explained. So, what happened to me? Starlight asked. I just commented that you should relax. Unfortunately, you relaxed a little too much. How can you do this to the ponies that you call your friends? Starlight questioned, with reproach evident in her voice. Look, do you think being an alicorn comes with an instruction manual? It's been happening since these things turned up. Knight said, flaring her wings. Unfortunately, Celestia did nothing to tell her faithful students anything about this. The whole thing seemed surreal to Twilight. Knight was aggressively trying to be reasonable, and it was strange. But at least she was not trying to compel her friends. <sighs> That's still mind control, but considering your lack of practice, I forgive you. Starlight said. It pleased Twilight that her student had come so far. Thank you. Unfortunately, I can't really turn it off yet. Knight said. Trixie expects some sort of reimbursement for this violation of her being. The showmare said, looking at Twilight. Twilight had a sinking feeling in her stomach. Knight was feeling like she had a wonderful idea, a slight hint of glee radiating from her. Twilight felt Knight quickly break off a fragment and dispatch it on a mission to the library. What are you doing? Twilight asked suspiciously. I know how I can repay you. Knight used her horn to create a flash that looked like a teleportation effect as the book was hoofed up by the fragment from her shadow. Here. Knight said, offering the book to Trixie. You can't! I haven't finished reading that one yet, and it's illegal for ponies to know some of those spells. Twilight frantically responded. Trixie's odd look made Twilight almost want to cry. It was a first edition book, a compilation of all illusion spells known 500 years ago, including more than a few that were illegal for ponies to know. 
She was going to read that later today if she had the chance. Knight made a thoughtful noise. There are a few spells in there I can't let you learn in there unless you want to join the guard. So, Sparks, which ones are legal? Twilight Sora snatched the book back. She felt a hint of glee for a moment at having the book back in her hooves. This one? Twilight thought about the page containing the first of the forbidden spells. Knight reached to tear the page out. No! Twilight cried out in her mind, panic and rage building. A few modes of fire formed on their body's mane. Okay, okay, calm down. That was just a joke. Knight mentally placated, her own concerns obvious to Twilight. Twilight's mental tone was full of annoyance. You are nowhere near as funny as you think you are! <sighs> Sorry if I'm a little low on experience on being funny. I just thought sharing jokes were what friends and family were meant to do. Knight replied. Leave the poor innocent books out of it. Twilight threatened. Twilight realized that she was stroking the book lovingly. Looking up, she noticed the strange looks that both Starlight and Trixie were giving her. Do you think that she's lost it again? Trixie whispered to Starlight, but at Twilight's eloquent senses, she might as well have shouted it. Twilight quickly lit her horn, conjuring blank pages out of nothing, but raw magic itself. She was too rattled to concentrate enough to open one of her pockets, so she just threw power at the problem. Using a copying spell to move the legal parts of the book to the fresh pages, she then bound them all together with a cover of the color of Trixie's coat. She even used a quick burst of the cleaning spell turned disintegration spell to etch an image of Trixie's cutie mark on the cover. There you go. Am I forgiven now? Twilight said, spinning the new book and presenting it with a flourish. <sighs> Trixie will admit, it's a start. Trixie said, not able to hide the smile and look of hunger that she directed at the new tome. Starlight bumped Trixie and whispered. Don't push your luck with the alicorn who admitted to having unconscious mind control and whose mane was on fire a moment ago. Twilight did her best to not smile, and pretended that she didn't hear the whispered comments. There was a long, painful silence, which Starlight broke. So, uh, what did you need my help with? Cooking? Or more precisely, finding a recipe? Twilight said. Twilight, you're the one that's the library. Why do you need Starlight to find a recipe? Trixie asked. Well, the recipe is... Twilight began. Kinda lost in time. What? Both Trixie and Starlight shouted. Man, I hope the trip is worth it, because that's a lot of effort to just get one recipe. Anyways, let's get on to our true chefs of donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, CrazyKiller557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Chris, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, RuneSlide9852, Madman Stan, Lazzy Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, RD, Convair, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.